The Mil V-12 stands out as the largest helicopter ever built. Its development was a bold Soviet-era engineering project to create an unparalleled heavy-lift helicopter that could transport massive loads, including military equipment and ballistic missile components. The Mil V-12 was an exceptionally large helicopter with a distinctive and unconventional design. Unlike traditional single-rotor helicopters, it employed a transverse twin-rotor configuration, which set it apart visually and technically. The V-12 had two rotors mounted on the ends of two large wings extending from the fuselage, much like the wings of a fixed-wing aircraft. Each wingtip housed two D-25 VF turboshaft engines, generating around 6,500 horsepower each. These engines were modifications of the D-25V family, already used in the Mi-6 and Mi-10 helicopters. The rotor blades were connected to a pair of transmissions that synchronized their rotation, ensuring stability even in the event of engine failure. The rotors rotated in opposite directions to counteract the torque generated by each other, eliminating the need for a tail rotor. The Mil V-12 measures 37 meters in length, 12.5 meters in height, and has a wingspan of 34.4 meters. Its two massive rotor blades have a diameter of 35 meters each. In terms of weight, the V-12 has a maximum takeoff weight of 105 tons. The V-12's fuselage design is similar to military cargo transport aircraft. It spans 28.15 meters in length with a width and height of 4.4 meters. This allowed the helicopter to carry up to 196 passengers or military equipment, including parts of ballistic missiles. It could carry an average payload of 20 tons and a maximum payload of 40 tons, making it capable of transporting cargo that even many airplanes couldn't handle at the time. Loading and unloading were done via a tail ramp like a transport plane. When the tail opened, the lower section formed a ramp, while the upper part split into two doors, revealing a rounded ceiling. The ramp was supported by hydraulic stabilizers, preventing the helicopter from tipping backward during loading. The cargo bay also had built-in cranes and winches to facilitate loading and unloading. For oversized cargo, the V-12 could utilize an external sling system, which allowed it to carry heavy machinery, construction materials, or military vehicles. The V-12 wing was an unusual feature for a helicopter. It widens and rises towards the tips, enhancing the aerodynamics and ensuring safe rotor operations. The wing was reinforced with a metal truss structure. This design optimizes airflow around the rotors and stabilizes the helicopter in flight. The wings also house some of the fuel tanks, while additional external fuel tanks are mounted on the sides of the fuselage to support the aircraft's long-range capabilities. In terms of performance, the Mil V-12 had a cruising speed of 240 km per hour and a maximum speed of 260 km per hour. Its practical range was 500 kilometers, with a ferry range of up to 1,000 kilometers. The helicopter could operate at a service ceiling of 3,500 meters, which was considered adequate for most missions, though higher altitudes were unnecessary since the helicopter wasn't intended to operate in high mountainous areas. The Mil V-12 set several records during its testing phase in 1969. It lifted 31,030 kilograms to a height of 2,951 meters. In another flight, it lifted 44,205 kilograms to a height of 2,255 meters. These records stood for over a decade, eventually being surpassed by the Mi-26 in 1982, which lifted 56.7 tons. Despite its impressive performance, the V-12 program was canceled in 1974. The Soviet military deemed the helicopter too complex and expensive for mass production. Additionally, by the 1970s, airplanes had taken over many heavy lifting tasks the V-12 was designed for, and the military's need for deploying ballistic missiles by helicopter had diminished. The simpler and cheaper Mi-26 became the preferred heavy lift helicopter, and the V-12 project was shelved. Only two prototypes of the V-12 were built, both of which are preserved in Russian museums today. One remains at the Mil Moscow helicopter plant, and the other is displayed at the Central Air Force Museum in Menino.